I, uh, my broadcast career in the professional space started with 947 when it was still called Joburg's number one hit music station, 94, uh, what's called Highfield Stereo. Um, but at the time I was studying at Wits University, I was part of um, the campus radio station there, but I just got to a place where I felt as though there was nothing more I could learn from my counterparts because we are all students naturally, right? Um, and I just wanted more. I can't explain it rationally. I just knew that I wanted to be at a place where I could gain access to more information, more, more something, whatever that thing was. And I remember going to, um, back in the days when everybody didn't have a laptop or our phones weren't necessarily fancy, um, I went to, to the campus computer center and I typed in South Africa's best radio stations into Google. And of course, the internet was a lot slower back then. So there's, you wait for it and then it opens up. And as it starts to unfold, you're like, wow, okay. And please don't laugh at me. But literally the only reason I ended up following in on the Highfield, at least honing in on Highfield, was because it said it was Joburg's number one hit music station. So in my head, there'd been a group of people who got together and had voted on this thing, and they decided this is the best station in the, in the province. Anyway, long story cut short, um, is that I then Googled how far it was from, from the campus, because I obviously needed to get there. And I found out that it was 17.5 kilometers away. I didn't have a cent to my name. Um, I was on bursary at Wits University. Um, my friend was kind of in a similar situation. I went up to him and I asked him, I said, mate, listen, uh, I need some cash for the taxi. Do you have anything? I mean, at that time, the taxi was, I think, five rands or something like that. And neither of us could rub together five rands. Um, and I remember walking with him from, from um, the food hall. Uh, and we we're just talking about how silly this is. Like, how can the two of us not be able to put five rands together? Anyway, um, I then decided, you know what, if I really want this thing bad enough, I'm going to go to this place, whether they like it or not. And I'm not going to take too much time, but the, the, the net result is I ended up um, walking from, you know, uh, Vitz campus all the way to, to, to um, you know, the media house there in Santon. Um, and whilst I was walking on the highway, because I had, I had to take the highway, um, cars would drive past me. And there'd be moments where I'm really ready to turn back because I'm tired. It's not as exciting as it was when I started the walk because the reality of what I'm doing has kind of hit me. And they drive past and once in a while there'd be a car with the window down and you just hear those whispers, Joe, it's number one, and it'll drive off and I'll be like, okay, gotta keep going, gotta keep going. The rest of the story is, is quite long, but what ends up happening is for three days, I end up doing this walk to and from, um, you know, <laughs> I felt because I didn't set an appointment with anybody, nobody was expecting me. But eventually, you know, I get um, an opportunity and that's through the then station manager. He says, listen, I'll listen to your stuff and I'll get back to you. Uh, and a couple of months later, I got a chance to come in and, you know, um, sort of follow everybody around and, and, and shadow everybody and learn what it is that they do. Um, and a couple of months after that, he called me and said, listen, um, you know, from a radio perspective, I've heard enough of these tapes. I know that there's plenty of talent in the world, uh, but what I really enjoyed was the feedback that I got from everybody who had worked with you whilst you were shadowing them. You've got the right attitude, you're hungry, you're eager to learn. And as a result of which, I'm gonna give you a chance uh, to do the graveyard slot on Friday evening. Did I not lose my mind? I was like, I've made it. I'm gonna be the biggest radio DJ in the world. <laughs> I don't think it has to do solely with my embracing the opportunities. It, a large part of it also had to do with luck to some degree, but also on the back end of that, um, I guess I could call them angels of sorts. So people who showed up for me, not expecting anything except to just give me an opportunity. So it's been a mixture of those things. Um, what I can say though, is that when those moments came, because I had nothing to offer, except myself more often than not i had to lean into that and i had to be honest with myself about who i was what i could and could not do and speak to that so i know that a lot of the time you know especially as young people we get told to to fake it till we make it um and the truth is in the times where i've tried to fake it i found that people have bs raiders that are quite high and so i come across as disingenuous or um I, they, they can't trust me and, and so I've won more often than not being myself, being authentic. And I struggle with that, I won't lie, because I've, I've, I've got the need and impulse to, to, to please people. I'm a people pleaser by nature, and I'm working hard on that. 
but yeah, I've, I've found that when, when I stick to my strengths and I play in them and I'm honest about what I can or cannot do, that's really opened up opportunities. And it doesn't mean that I've stayed in sort of those spaces because in being truthful and in sort of getting the opportunities I've had, I've been able to learn and open up other worlds and sort of increase my skill set um, and, and what I bring to the table. So. Some would say this is subjective and opportunistic, but it's 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 my truth, so I'm going to share, share it as such, right? But I honestly believe that you know hard skills are easy to get, especially living in the world that we live in, where technology allows us access to information. So there's plenty of information out there. Um, some, I, I guess, the, the that old saying, which I now can't remember, but it has to do with wisdom. There's a lot less of that, um, and I think what we owe young people in this country is to Get, to help them understand that whilst it's important for you to be able to do a thing, it is equally as important for you to be a person or a type of person. And that's work. It doesn't happen by chance, right? Uh, and more often than not, you know, I have conversations with my friends and I'd say, a lot of us have grown up, but very few of us are raised. So whilst we might be incredibly skilled at one thing in a professional environment, we lack so much else internally and we don't do enough of that work. So. I guess my advice to corporate South Africa would be to look at, to, to value um, the soft skills just as much as we do the hard skills and not just in a nice way that you put in a brochure or a company website that leadership and et cetera, et cetera is important to us, but to really help young people find who they are. And I think once you have that synergy between, you know, the skills that they've acquired through sort of traditional education and uh, experience, and you marry that with a better understanding of who they are, you're going to find that they're going to be more useful and more impactful uh, and more valuable as employees or teammates in your organization. But I think for their own lives as well, they'll be more in charge and in command uh, of where they're going to. I hope Instagram doesn't delete my account for saying this, but... <laughs> But get out of sort of Instagram and into Instagram. And I know it's a quotable, uh, but there is some value in, in, in the principle. And the principle is simply this, that, you know, every day you're being told to project an idea of who you are to the world, right? Um, just make sure that whilst you're doing that, you're spending a lot more time in actually pouring into yourself and doing the inner work. Um, that will stand you in good stead, irrespective of, you know, what is happening around you. I mean. If I think of my own life and some of that journey that I've been on, and I didn't tell you this, but I'll say it now. There was a period after I left uh, or aspired, to be honest with you, <laughs> um, Heifeld, where for about a year and seven months, I ended up living on the streets of Johannesburg, that's sleeping on benches in Rosebank and et cetera, et cetera, right? At that time, the only thing I had was what was within. And so um, whilst it's very hard to see because it's an intangible quality or thing that you have, it is possibly more important than the skill sets that you will acquire through life. Because we cannot predict what will happen. Uh, I think COVID, if anything, has shown us that, hey, no matter what kind of models, predictive models, you know, fancy people have and make up, life will happen. And when life happens, what really holds us together is who we are and not what we have, or what we know, or who we know, you know. So um, to young people, I'd say, invest in who you are.